Jeremy, congratulations. Uh, just the confidence and, and the comfort you've shown throughout this postseason, where does that come from? Does that come from following your dad around? Or where does that come from? <laughs> man, where do I even start? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it has a lot to do with my family, you know, my upbringing. Shout out to my teammates as well. You know, they uh, took me in since day one. You know, they gave me the confidence to just go out and play my game. And uh, yeah, shout out to them, man. This is this is special. Other questions for Jeremy, Tyler, or him? Jeremy, when you when you got this this opportunity to be the starting shortstop for the Astros, you know, did you? What was the biggest challenge in replacing a guy like Correa, and how did these guys help you relax and, and be yourself? I say the hardest part was just blocking everything that's not, you know, part part of the game. You know, there's a saying that you can't sink a ship with water around. You know, it sinks if water gets inside. So I just try to stay strong and keep the water outside my head. So uh, yeah, just keep playing my game, show up every single day, and uh, yeah, just trust in my preparation. Go to him. Congratulations, Jeremy. We think of you as being new to this organization because you're new at the major league level, but you've been with the Astros for a while in the minor leagues. What have you sort of seen at the lower levels that is also here at the major league level that allows the team to be so good? I mean, since my first uh, pro ball team, short season at Tri-City Valley Cats, managed by Jason Bell, you know, we had a winning culture since day one. You know, we won the championship that year, and that was this that was the expectation every single year, you know, and I say that's the culture we built here in the organization. It doesn't matter what level, you know, we expect to develop you, and at the same time, we're going we're gonna to win games. And, uh, yeah. Clinton on your left, Jeremy. You got the flag there, young man. How good does it feel to represent your nation in a win like this? Man, that's special, man. I can't even put it into words right now, but, you know, shout out to my Dominican people. I mean, gente dominicana, lo hicimos. Estamos aquí. Uh, back to Tyler, Jeremy. Jeremy, Dusty's been managing since before you were born. Um, you know, it's his first World Series. Uh, what, did, what has he done for, for you um, specifically and also just for this team here that you've seen this year? And how badly did you want to win this for him as well? I mean, it's special for sure. Dusty Baker's a legend in the sport. You know, not just because he's been around. You know, he's had success in this game and... Uh, you know, he brings the best out of his players. You know, he gives you the confidence to just go out and play hard and, you know, let the game take care of itself. And you can't ask more of a manager. You know, he brings out the best of you. And he took me in since day one. And for this to be his first World Series championship, it, it's special to be a part of it. I will go to Anthony over here. Can you take us through that sixth inning um, with your base hit and, and setting up Alvarez there? I mean, first of all, shout out to Altuve for beating, beating out the, the double play. You know, you can't teach hustle, and he, he's hustled all year. You know, he leads by example, and that's something I always look up to, you know. And, uh, yeah, it was just uh, pass the baton mentality. You know, get on base and let Jordan do his thing. You know, he's done it all year, and he came through for us. That's, that's big time. Go in front with Steve here. Congratulations. Uh, th this city is known for space. Uh, it, it sort of seemed like a moonshot that uh, Jordan hit. When he hit the <laughs> ball, I mean, was there any doubt? I mean, he's done it before, but what was going through your mind once you heard, saw it? And <sighs> Man, that ball was hit hard, and I've never seen anything like it. And if I have seen it, it probably came from him as well. So, you know, shout out to him. He's a strong boy, but he's a great hitter. You know, and we're, we're glad he, was, he had the special season he had this year. Questions for Jeremy and the second row here. Your, congratulations. Thank you. Your season seemed to change when Dusty put you in the number two hole. Talk about that and your adjustment in that spot and how it helped you finish strong like you did. So like I said, you know, him putting me in the second in the lineup, that just tells you he, he had confidence in me to, to get the job done. And like I said, you know, he brings out the best of you. You know, I felt like I appreciated that, you know. But, you know, shout out to Jason Kanzler, our hitting coach, you know, Troy Snicker, um, Alex Centrone. You know, we worked hard all year, you know, trying to, you know, make adjustments all season long. And, uh, yeah, shout out to them. Dusty, it's been 10,806 days since you managed your first game. Really? For this, Yeah nearly 30 years ago, from that point to now, yeah. how much have you thought about this moment to manage a, 
a team that won the World well, Series? Well, I, I thought about it a lot. You know what I mean? I try not to dwell on it, uh, but uh, try to have faith and perseverance and knowing that, you know, with the right team and the right personnel and right everything that, you know, this was going to happen. And, um, you know, if, had this happened years ago, I might not even be here. You know what I mean? So maybe it wasn't supposed to happen so that I could hopefully influence a few young men's lives and their families and, and uh, you know, a number of people in the country through showing, you know, what perseverance and character, you know, can do for you to, in the long run. I, I'm hoping that I gave some people the same hope that my mom and dad, you know, gave me that, you know, sometimes you just... It's not in your control sometimes, because um, there were circumstances that happened in in other postseasons of the World Series, or calls or balls that you know, or guys that didn't do this or, or did do that for and against us. So um, I'm just extremely um, happy. Hadn't really sunk in yet until probably till I get back to Cali. Mm -hmm. We got Clinton the third row on your left. Is it relief? Is it joy? What's what's the feeling right no, now? No, it's not relief. It's it's uh it's just sheer joy and thankfulness, you know. It's not relief at all. I mean, cuz everybody was talking about it more than I was even thinking about it, you know. And so uh you know, I always said before that if I win one, you know, I'll win two, but you got to win one first. I mean, the one was hell to, to get to this point. And, uh, but uh, it was well worth it. Um, I'm in a great city with great people, great fans, and I got a great, you know, great ball club. And, um, I mean, these guys, they know how to win. They come to play. No alibis, no excuses. Uh, you know, you can come in our clubhouse. You can't tell if we, the next day, if we lost or if we won, you know. And so these guys are very consistent in their personality and their, and the confidence that they have in themselves. Uh, Christy in the fourth row on your right. Hey, Dusty. Um, last year before the World Series, we talked about the conversation you had with your dad after mm -hmm. the 2002, how he said after what happened, he didn't know if you'd ever win another one, and that kind of mm -hmm. drove you. Are you thinking about him tonight? And what, what, oh, what? I was thinking about him this morning when I woke up. And, you know, game six has been my nemesis throughout my career. And this is game six. And I was like, I really didn't want to get to game six again. But I was like, well, maybe this is how it's supposed to be. But, you know, my dad didn't mean anything negative when he said, you know, my dad, you know, back in the old school, there was such thing as negative motivation. You know, in the new school, negative motivation doesn't work. But, like, you know, my dad was the kind of dude that I score four or five touchdowns, score 30 points, and I'd ask my dad, you know, how I do tonight in basketball, and my dad would tell me pretty good. And I'm like, damn, Dad, I think I did great, <laughs> you know? But, you know, pretty good was his way of keeping me motivated that next time I score five or six touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Tyler in the second row. Dusty, congratulations. Thank you. You were you succeeded as a manager right from the start. I mean, mm -hmm. the 93 Giants, manager of the year, I'm pretty sure. Um, but how has that perseverance changed you or improved you or made you different over these last 30 years? Well, I mean, it's, it's made me calmer. It's made me, um, you know, my 93 team won 103 games. And then in 94, we had the lockout. And then in 95, you know, they sold half the team. You know, Billy Swift and John Burkett and Will Clark and – you know, Mike Jackson and uh, Robbie Thompson and uh, uh, Matt Williams and Kurt Manwaring. I mean, th then I didn't understand it, but I didn't understand really the economics of, of baseball. Uh, and I guess they lost a lot of money, but I always thought that we could have won five or six years more after that 93 season. And, and even five or six years later, I was saying hello to – Everybody on every team that had been on my team before, Royce Clayton and, you know, Darren Lewis and Willie McGee. And, you know, we had some great players at that time. And, uh, um, you know, then scuffled back. And, you know, we've 
I've had some ups and downs and some disappointments, you know, but those disappointments make you stronger or they break you, you know, and so um, this has kind of been a story of, you know, my life where people tell me what you can't do or even now, I won a bunch of games, uh, my team won a bunch of games and all I hear about is what you don't do, you don't like this or you don't like young players, you can't handle pitchers, you can't, and I'm like, well, damn, what did I do? <laughs> you know what I mean? After a while, I, I quit listening to, to folks telling me, you know, what I can't do. And all that does is motivate me more to do it because I know there's a bunch of people in this country that are told the same thing. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's broken a lot of people. But, you know, my faith in God and, and, and my mom and dad always talking to me made me persevere even more. My mom... She told me a number of times, you know, um, like, you know, to be African-American, you got to be twice as, as good to achieve the same thing. I heard that over and over and over. And my dad would always tell me, you know, when I'd get in fights and stuff, and he'd tell me what would Jackie do. And I'm like, you know, I'm not a – and Jackie wasn't a turn-the-cheek brother either. I'm damn sure not a, a turn-the-cheek of the dudes, you know what I mean? So, but, you know, you learn to – coexist with different people and then in the workplace. Okay. Anthony in the third row. Congratulations, Dusty. Thank you. Um, how cathartic is this win, not just for you, but this organization, you know, given the controversy and the, the losses here in this building in, in 2019 mm -hmm. and last year? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's what drove this team. You know, that's what motivated them. To, and, and, I mean, the boos and the jeers that we got all over the country – you know, it bothered these guys, but it also motivated them at the same time, you know. And it wasn't a us against the world thing. It was it was more of a uh, come together even closer type thing, you know what I mean? So, and, you know, what happened before, it'll never pass over, I mean, completely. But, you know, we have turned the page, and hopefully we'll continue this run. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing when I talk to James Click and especially when I talk to Jim, you know, he expects to win. He, he, you know, he doesn't want to go from first to worst in, in a two- or three-year period. You know, I mean, he wants this feeling, and I, I like this feeling a lot. And I always... <laughs> And, you know, when I was a kid, I hated the Celtics because they won too much. They, you know, they beat the Lakers all the time. And I didn't like the Yankees because they won too much. They beat the Dodgers all the time. But then when I got to be a player and a manager, I was yearning to be just like the Celtics and the Yankees. You know, they were beating the teams, uh, you know, never gets old. You know, and then when I look at Phil Jackson and I listen to him talk about how every year is a different challenge. So, um, you know. I, I've, always, I've always welcomed that challenge. Steve up front. Congratulations, Dusty. Thank you. Uh, but before all this, you had achieved so much. Uh, you were viewed as a great manager before this. This didn't happen. By have some happen. people. I think by most people. Some uh, people. Okay. I'll say most. We'll disagree on that. Okay. But th this obviously is something that you want. You, you want to end up on top, and you have finally done it. What's going through your heart and mind right now? If you can take a slight step back. I know it's not been that well, long, but. I'm, I'm just grateful, really, for, you know, the uh, trials and tribulations that you go through in order to get to this, you know. And uh, just grateful for my, you know, mom and dad for being, you know, tough on me, you know. And, uh, and also grateful for, for, you know, for some of the enemies that helped motivate me to get to this point you know what I mean and uh, and you know with no malice or or, or anything uh, because that doesn't do any good you know so you just gotta just gotta do your thing whether and I've you asked me earlier you know what <clears throat> what's kind of you know on my mind and, and and I've come to the point where you know I really don't care if you agree or with me and or not in what I do and how I do it. Just the fact that over the years we've done it pretty good. So 
there ain't no sense in me trying to satisfy you. I'm just trying to satisfy those those guys in in the room in there and trying to satisfy my boss and get a raise sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> when the moment happens, it's the final hour. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I was counting the outs. You know, you, I was counting the outs in the eighth and then the ninth. And then I heard my dad talking to me and my mom and my brother who passed. And, you know, Don Baylor, I was thinking of Donnie today. He's on my wall. And Hank Aaron and Joe Black and, you know, all the guys at Roy Campanella, Jim Gilliam, all the guys at Al Kaline, you know, guys that motivated me and guys that were in my corner. And I was thinking, you know, please press no drama in the ninth. And I was saying, JR, man, give me your slider. That's, <laughs> that's what I was, I was thinking. Was it Tyler in the second row? Dusty, you mentioned a minute ago about that lesson you learned as a kid, having to work twice as hard. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to ask you about how you think where baseball is right now in terms of African American. I mean, you've set a great example as a manager, but there's still not many others. Right. There's, there's fewer players um, now as well. Um, how much progress do you think still needs to be made on, on, on that front? Well, a lot of progress needs to be made. I mean, it's, it didn't take overnight to get in this situation. And it's not going to take overnight to, to get out of this situation. I mean, you see how many draft choices, top draft choices were, were African American. I mean, they're not going to rush all the kids up here at the same time if they're not ready. But you have to have them in the pipeline in order to, to um, you know, to have some. And you got to also have some African American coaches and 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 managers in the pipeline to have more. I mean, right now there, I told somebody 10 years ago that the way baseball was going, it, and I love my Latin brothers, but you know, uh, the, you know, they're weren't going to need any any African American coaches really you're gonna need either white coaches or Lat latin american coaches because you always i try to have a diversified staff where guys can relate to to anybody on the staff and go talk to them i always had african-american dude i always had a couple latin dudes i always had uh, uh, a sophisticated college dude i always had some you know some country white dudes that they can go talk to you know what i mean i mean because everybody needs somebody that they can talk to and relate to and uh so you know we're not doing a real good job but hopefully we'll keep talking about it. i've been saying the same thing for like 30 40 years i mean how, how long can i say the same thing yeah. you know what i mean what before the change is going to come you know what i mean so i hope i'm around long enough just like jackie robinson was hopefully that i'd be in this position as a manager like he's speech in cincinnati and so I hope I'm around long enough to see my son and some other dudes in the big leagues here in the near future. Just a few more, Jason, in the fourth row. Dusty, congratulations. Thank you. Um, it, in so many ways, it's incredible that your story converged with this team's story. Mm -hmm. on, on a night like this, does it feel at all like it was meant to be that oh, you yeah. were the manager of this team, both for you and for them? Well, I felt, that, I mean, you know, when the scandal was exposed and then I was hired here, you know, oh, yeah, I felt it was meant to be. And, and I felt that the Lord worked through Jim Crane because I don't think I was probably first on his on his list to be hired here. But some of the guys that I had played with and, and on his former players on his advisory staff indeed told him that I was probably the best guy for the job. And... Um, yeah, I, I definitely, you know, thought it was meant to be. I mean, big time, and uh, so I welcomed it. Um, you know, it's, it's tough being away from home. I ain't been home in eight months. You know what I mean? So I, I, I jumped head long into this job with the goal of trying to win. Do two more, Kim, and then Clinton. Dusty, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I wanted to follow up. You, you mentioned, I know you talk a lot about your mom and dad, but you also talk about Hank Aaron and, and some of the others. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what you think um, 
Hank would say and just what it means knowing that you had all those all those guys in your corner? Well, you know, I was always the kid. I was always the youngest guy. I was in big league camp at 18, 19 years old. I was in the big leagues at 19. So I was, I was always around, you know, older players, older guys, and they all always had a mama, a, a black lady in the minor league town that I was in that wanted to be my mama, you know, that cooked for me and took care of me. And, um, you know, uh, and I really believe, you know, last year was the year of Hank Aaron. And, uh, you know, the, one of the worst days of my life was when my wife came in and woke me up in the bed and told me Hank had, had died. And that was right before spring training. And, uh, but last year being a year of Hank Aaron, the Braves supposed to win. You know, I didn't like it, but maybe they're supposed to win. And I'm like, okay, Hank, they won. Okay, now. So now you really got to root for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious uh, now. Yeah. And so it's like, um, yeah, I'm sure he's smiling and he's happy. And, you know, all, all the players, like I said, that, that I played with and against, and I was a young Dusty. I mean, I'm sure they're all happy too. We'll finish up with Clinton in the third row. Uh, Jeremy said he thought your best skill was getting the best out of guys. You mentioned mm -hmm. different types of motivation over the years. How has that evolved for you? And, and by extension, what has this season taught you about yourself as a manager? Mm -hmm. Well, as you get older, it taught me to go home, go to bed. Where, before, where in the, when I was much younger, I didn't, I didn't like to hang out a little bit, you know what I mean? So and that's what taught me to take care of myself. And uh, this is what, you know, since my cancer and then my stroke, it made me appreciate life. And it made me take better care of myself. I got two grandchildren now. And I got a son, 23. So it's like um, it just, you know, made me want to, you know, seize the day and try to, try to be productive every day and treat. And then one thing I hear my dad always tell him, you try to do the right thing. And sometimes that's, that's tough, you know what I mean? Because sometimes you want to do the selfish thing. But the right thing, whatever that is in your mind, that's what I try to do. Yo soy Jeremy Peña y sigan con la máquina deportiva.